respected uh, Pradeep sir and all participants and teachers. Uh, Professor T. Pradeep, a Padma Shri awardee as an institute professor and professor of chemistry at uh, Indian Institute of Madras. And he all, he's a fellow of Indian National Science Academy, Indian Academy of Sciences, Indian National Academy of Engineering, the National Academy of Sciences, the Royal Society of Chemistry, American Association for Advancement of Science and World Academy of Sciences. He had honored by different awards, including Padma Shri, Nikki Asia Prize, the World Academy of Sciences, JC Bose National Award Fellowship, Shandi Swara Bhatnagar Award, BM Birla Science Award. And he had a, pay, a lot of patent with him. And uh, he's visiting professor in Purdue University, EPFL Switzerland, Institute of Chemistry, Taiwan, uh, Poang University, South Korea, and University Yogo, Japan. And his area of interest, material sciences, clean water, instrumentation, and business incubation. With due respect, I request Professor T. Pradeep to deliver the talk. Over to Pradeep. Thank you, Shalina, for uh, that introduction. Well, we are at, uh, at 11.20, uh, and I would like to um, close this well in time so that uh, Shobhana can start her lecture at 11.45 or so. Uh, maybe 11.55 minutes delay. I would like to close this in, uh, in 30 minutes uh, and so that we have time for a quick coffee or uh, something. Professor Desiraju touched upon a very important problem. And he spoke also about the vision of uh, Professor Radhakrishnan, going back to roots, languages, realizing countries' problems, solving issues of local relevance, and many, many aspects. And of course, uh, speaking about Radhakrishnan, who is also connected to Professor Desiraju. So it's, uh, it is, well, I don't want to dwell into this because time is so short. I chose uh, to talk about water. And if you were to ask me, what is the biggest problem uh, that is facing man? Obviously, one very important problem of relevance. Water. Everything is water. And there are books written on this, and I would like you to read about that when somebody says everything is water. Uh, what is that? When, somebody, when someone says that cities cannot exist if we don't have the sewage system, and the entire sewage system is nothing but water. Without the flow of water, where are the cities? And somebody has written a book on it. So every subject around water is very big because most of the people around uh, in this conference are students, I would like you to look at the multiple dimensions of water. I chose to talk about one smaller subject of that large, big capital W water. This is drinking water. When I say clean water using nanotechnology, I'm particularly referring to drinking water using nanotechnology. And this has, of course, built several companies and our startup endeavors and things like that. Uh, and, and so I will give you a brief tour of that so that people who are listening can also see that Indian research is today translated. So this particular technologies or materials that I'm talking about, they are giving clean water to about 10 million people. I am going to touch upon one technology which is giving clean water to 1 million people uh, today. Now, water is, of course, dear to me. Uh, uh, to all of you, of course, it should be dear. Every time I travel through, travel on this NH47, which is, we call our national highway, Americans call a strip of asphalt. 
uh, on that, there is a place called Kuchipuram. And uh, Kuchipuram, we have a bridge that is Bharatapura. And it is this 287 kilometer long river, which is our longest river. But today, just after rains, now you will have water, but just after rains, about one month after rains, the river would look like this at Kuchipuram. But then just 10 kilometers away, that's where my home is, we have a pond of this kind, serene water. We still have it. But then water is increasingly threatened in many parts uh, of, of our country. It's also important to realize, Professor Desiraju touched upon sort of and roots and language. And it is important to realize that in this state, Itasheri Govindan Nair wrote his poem, famous poem, Kuchipuram Palam, about this bridge. And this Kuchipuram Palam talks about, this was written in 1953. It talked about the consequences of this river, I mean, this bridge and civilization and heavy traffic and the oil and everything else that will, that will contribute to the destruction of the river and the neighborhood. And this 1953 was an early warning in fact, many of us celebrate Silent Spring as the emergence of environmentalism in the world. That was 1962. But remember, Itasheri wrote about it in 1953. So those of you who would like to know about environmentalism and, and uh, what literature uh, contributed to, to that, please look at uh, Itasheri. So I have been fortunate to know, to have one leg in poetry, another leg, leg in science. And therefore it was important uh, to appreciate the wealth of our region. So as I talk about water, water is nothing but a cycle. This whole world is nothing but uh, water plus carbon dioxide going to sugar and oxygen. Because it is not just only sugar and oxygen, it produces many other things alkaloids and terpenes and many others. And the civilization, as we know, is just going, taking this and back to water and carbon dioxide. We do this much more vigorously and not only using sugar and oxygen, but also whatever sugar has and oxygen, sugar has made later years to petroleum, we use all that very fast uh, and to produce carbon dioxide. The current problem is largely that. And in this, Sugar and oxygen, of course, we use, and the human life produces just about 29 billion tons of CO2 per year for our activities, our, not only ours, animal activities. But then our civilization produces 258 billion tons of CO2, over 10 times. And this is the largest problem, and that is the environmental catastrophe that we are talking about today the global warming and many others. So if you address the clean water problem, you're also connecting, uh, well, the clean water problem to the global environmental issues. And when I was uh, working on this, when I started working on this, I did not realize the magnitude of this just as any other uh, scientist would, you know, I was, I was just getting, jumping into an issue. Uh, and gradually I realized that there are many other aspects connected to this. So started working on many others as well, but then I will not have time to tell you all that. Since clean water problem today with nanotechnology uh, was written up in the form of a perspective article this year in ACS NAN. So I would like you in case you are interested in, please have a look at uh, this perspective article. Look at Indian realities. 80 million people suffer due to arsenic. Over 130 million people suffer due to fluoride. We are talking about this, this fluoride problem. Although uh, today, you must realize that fluoride in water and the consequences of that 
called fluorosis was discovered in this country in 1937. So same is the case with many other problems, but we have not found problem, the solutions for these problems. Affordable solutions, of course, solutions exist, but the solutions don't reach people uh, because solutions are not affordable. There are several other problems as well and associated metal ion contamination along with metal ion contamination, associated problems, let's say as pesticide contamination, they together have uh, given rise to issues such as uh, chronic kidney disease of unknown etiology and things of this kind. So there are several other consequences. The most recent thesis that uh, came out from my laboratory by a physician was on studying the effect of arsenic and pesticides, especially organophosphorus pesticides in Indian farmers in the state of Tamil Nadu. So consequences are really alarming. We are seeing over 7% increase in diabetes in farming population just because of the, because of the combined effect of arsenic and pesticides together. Now, this is this has not been investigated in the state of Kerala. This has not been investigated in, in, in states across the country. This is a very a sort of a time bomb thinking. Farming population having pestis, uh, diabetes higher than the national average. This was completely unexpected. But anyway, there are several other associated issues. So if you have 80 million people suffering due to arsenic and 130 million suffering due to fluoride and all of these contribute to several health effects including genetic uh, deformations and things, uh, damages and associated consequences, what would be the impact of these on generations? In a democracy, how can we subject over 200 million people to conditions of this kind, fully realizing that they cannot compete with the rest of the population? They don't have equal opportunities. So what kind of democracy? Are there? So there are several other issues also, which people have touched upon in books. So we have written several articles in this area along the lines of generating or developing new adsorbents, new sensors, new catalysts, understanding new phenomena, and all of these combining, developing new devices. Well, taking one example, so there are nanomaterials, which are all exciting. Take uh, an example of nanomaterials of this kind. These are extremely small particles, 25 atoms of gold with certain number of ligands, 18 of them with a charge. I chose this example because nanomaterials are very different today. They are like molecules. So you can use molecular tools to understand their properties, such as a mass spectrum for this particular molecule. And I call this as molecule because there's a molecular weight, there are molecular properties. You can crystallize these and you have, you have as crystals are seen here, uh, you have a structure. So you have reactivity, you have energetics, you have kinetics, we study all of these. What I wanted to tell you is that when these materials show interesting properties in the context of water, we can study these with molecular tools to a great extent. So when we study this, we have great understanding of this. Well, so I will not, though I have time to tell you all that. What we have got is uh, that using all of these, we have built filters like this. This can filter arsenic from drinking water. So this boy is pumping this borewell in a state called West Bengal, in a district called Nadia. And uh, this borewell is about 40 years old. It is pumping water from a depth of about, uh, uh, about 80 feet or so. 
and uh, on the cement bench you can see a red stain which tells you that there is iron contamination in water expected in this region if there is iron there could be arsenic and it has about 60 ppb parts per billion micrograms per liter of arsenic now, what's the solution the upper limit of arsenic is 10 parts per billion so this is far above the limits and this can cause damages if you consume that water for a long time so we have this small filter this is based on new materials that we have developed now without any additional pressure drop this boy with one in one stroke of uh, this pump you get 300 ml of clean water confirming to all international standards us epa or who norms you can get 1,000 liters of water per day using about 7 kg of material, and this material can run for one full year. The cost of this water is less than two paisa per liter. Well, we have several other materials. You can sense contaminants in water. We will not have time to tell you all that. We can create new materials, study their properties in, in great detail. And with all that, we have put in bio-inspired, nature-inspired green materials in the field. We call these materials as water-positive materials. These are materials, if you use one liter of water for their production in the useful life of this material, they give 1,000 liters of clean water. Whereas any other material that you may have uses, of course, materials for their production. It produces clean water, but when it goes back to the field or environment after their life, it sort of contaminates water. So this whole cycle, we have been in a position to address it. I have no time to tell you all that. To, uh, now, such materials, you can use a large number of spectroscopic and microscopic tools to study how they work. For example, how arsenic sits on such materials. So you can study this. Um, so there is a lot of um, material science, spectroscopy in this. So if you take a nanoparticle like this, you can understand each one of these red and uh, blue circles indicate specific kind of adsorption sites and we can understand how adsorption occurs and you can engineer these particles such that more of those specific sites are created and thereby you can remove a contaminant from water in a controlled fashion so we not only make milligrams of these make materials today we make over 100 tons of these materials and you can put these in the materials in the field. A traditional filter will look like this, but uh, this is about 40 cents of land area is required to supply clean water to a community of 2,000 people. We can do that entire thing with five cents of land area. And this is what we have been in a position uh, to do. And now this has been implemented across the country. This is now in the state of Punjab. And the price is somewhere around 2.1 paisa per liter, including all investment put together and uh, there are various installations. But what is water quality reports? They look like these. And uh, this is from a trial installation costing about 22 crores. We are giving water in, in this 22 crore installation. 83 community villages are served uh, with this water. Well, I have no time uh, to tell you in two more minutes. Let me uh, tell you uh, that today we deploy not only water humidification units, we also deploy water sensing and measurement online and uh, so that this entire water quality can be mapped nationally. And that's a great vision forward. And our prime minister, as you know, wants to make sure that uh, people get clean water on their taps by 2024, all people. So that's a great vision for which a lot of technology uh, is needed. So that's one side of uh, nanotechnology. The other side of nanotechnology is harvesting water from air. So we create such kind of structures and we create harvest water 
and we have a company in, in this regard. There are many people globally working on various kinds of materials, extracting water from air with metal organic frameworks, uh, two dimensional materials and things like that. Uh, again, I have no time uh, to tell you all that. I have no time to tell you other uh, work of other colleagues in the country as well as uh, abroad. This is, for example, from Kanna Suresh in Trivandrum. The previous one was from Rahul Nair from Manchester, uh, several other uh, people. Our own work is in also in the area of creating gas hydrates. So we have, and gas hydrates can be used not only to create energy, this is something that people are using, uh, but also in the process can also create clean water because gas hydrates are nothing but water and hydrate uh, gases. So once you get gas is taken out, you get clean water and gas hydrates are generally formed in sea. So seawater is naturally getting converted to fresh water through gas hydrates. Well, I will leave all that and tell you that in IIT Madras, we want to ensure uh, that clean water reaches more people. So for that, we have built a new center called the International Center for Clean Water in the IIT Madras Research Park, this building that you see. And uh, this place is a new initiative that I have taken up, which is a place where anybody can come and build water technologies right from scratch. And this is currently active. Anyone with an idea is welcome to come. And we have the entire pipeline right from basic research to technology and commercialization. This is a completely completely uh, charity initiative of, uh, of several people, of course. This person has contributed immensely to this. His name is Deep Aquaric, is the chairman of HPFC. And this has resulted in a large number of companies and, uh, and this organization, as I just told you about, I did not have time uh, to tell you so many other things. Simple message is water is the largest problem and you can address these problems in India by developing advanced materials and you can walk all the way from basic science to technology to product implementation and for which institutions exist today. today. And it's important to take advantage of this. That's all, thank you very much. And we are at 11, we have five minutes for coffee. Thank you, sir. It's a great pleasure to listening you a thought provoking and inspiring lecture on water, uh, a necessity for life. Hope all enjoyed it. And one or two can unmute and ask questions. We are running short of time. So I request one or two to unmute and ask questions. We don't have to have questions. We can, people can take these questions later on with me. Let us save some time. Let us get this back uh, to uh, you know the scheduled uh, our schedule, and Shobhana should have enough time uh, to for her presentation. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So uh, we are moving to our next lecture. So we have a short break, isn't it? Uh, just a five minutes yes, or something. So that the you, time, sir. Now we are running short of time. It's 11 40, 45, I think, near to 43. So, if yeah. we can start five minutes after so that people have time, then uh, Shobana could probably save five minutes. And so, we will be back. Uh, on so, show. let us join by 11 50, sir. Uh, no, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, 11 50. But let us not leave. If, if those of you who want to leave, uh, please leave. Otherwise, or uh, go to the washroom or whatever but come back uh, as soon as possible. I think Shobhana, um, you're okay with the uh, five minutes of, uh, anyway, she's on call. Okay, so we will start uh, at 11.50 then. Shobhana, it's okay, right? 11.50, muted. Hi.
Great. Glad to see you, Samir. You're looking exactly like your father. Oh, have you met him? Hey, <laughs> Pradeep. Hello, Professor Desiraji. Good to listen to you all. It's nice of you, Samit, uh, to listen to you. Yeah, thanks. Well, we have to have a, you know, this lecture takes 45 minutes. So I don't want to, uh, people want to know a little bit about science also, but it takes 45 minutes. I don't have, we have that kind of time, so. Have you muted everybody else or we don't know? I mean, what's happening? Uh, people are, some people are muted. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm really looking forward to the lectures, you know, because uh, I have some limitations on the internet. I have only so much internet per day. So, mm -hmm. however much I can listen to, I'll try to listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr. Pramod Pillai is here. I see his uh, face. Nice to see yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you for this invitation. It is a great pleasure for us to share some of our science here. So, you're uh, joining from your office or? Uh... Yeah, I'm in my office. Very nice. Pramod is at uh, Aisar uh, Pune. Pune. Yeah. Aisar Pune. Yeah. No, I'm glad that you have selected so many of the younger people. And uh, the topics are also very varied and interesting, not the usual kind of things that we see. So the way we do this is that we have certain national, uh, uh, you know, people from national institutions, uh, some from region, and uh, mostly younger people. But, uh, mostly young people. Uh, but then there are occasionally a few others. They're all under whatever age group. But uh, there are also people like me and Shobhana as well. <laughs> The joke they say about calling more seasoned people is that you can even predict when the joke will come. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. But uh, no, but clearly the the seeds have been properly sown in Farooq College. Otherwise, you will not be able to. How much soever you do from the outside, unless the thing is there, desire to do it. From within, it will not take off the way it seems to have taken off. Management has taken a great initiative. There are many of the youngsters, as you you would see, there are uh, PhDs from good institutions. Uh, there are no uh, caste, religious, etc. barriers, uh, and absolutely quite uh, a large number of institutions take um, capitation fee uh, for appointments. This is completely open. This is completely open. No, I realize all this, and this business of PhDs from. Tier 1 universities joining Tier 2 as faculty is something that started in China long ago. And I've been looking forward to seeing it happening in India because that it has to go only in that group. You know, if a TIFR PhD says that I only want a job in TIFR, then you're not really moving forward. Yeah. And, uh, Rigid is also changing you saw PK. I mean, this, this, this man has built a steel empire on his own. And uh, he is now shipping uh, things uh, to, you know, Singapore and uh, several other places. So, you know, some of the wars that he was uh, making, I was seeing, you know, he's so huge wars, it requires one truck to move one wall. <laughs> and this is all coming from uh, Calicut, huh? Mm -hmm. No, I think we have to really start looking downwards and inwards. And because that is where the, you know, unless the student knows that the employment is tied to a place close to his or her native place, it becomes very disconcerting. And then they go away all over the world. And, you know, it's actually, really, it's a waste in the end for the country. The I mean, yes, they have done very well individually in America and all. I know that. But in the long run, it is a, it's a waste for the country. The coconut oil business from Calicut alone is uh, 3,000 crores. Ah. So it's, it's, it's very much possible to to get to something 
uh, large. But then technology is very much needed. Coconut oil is not just coconut oil here. And today, coconut oil is becoming big uh, globally. Correct. Uh, but Correct. this has to go. Well, yesterday, we are, yesterday, we are hearing about this honey also. Yeah. I'm sure this is a thing that really can be exploited in Kerala properly. And where chemistry can also come in in a big way because they've used that NMR test in Germany and found out that most of the Indian honey is adulterated. Several things are possible. Uh, I mean, I, I think there has to be a good bridge. And, uh, and you know, in fact, in all these previous, uh, say, previous EFCS series, we used to have industrial speakers. Ah. And uh, that, that way, we have a direct connect uh, with the industries in the, in the region.